All right, it's exactly four minutes after seven. Now, let's talk Project Tefiasi because it was launched uh, last Tuesday. And you know in between that, that one of our colleagues, Seth Kwame Boateng, was also not honored. So a flashback of what happened last Tuesday. We'll come back and continue a beautiful conversation here in the studio. Ifiasi is an Akan word which means prison. Many shy away from anything associated with prisons, but not those who gathered Tuesday night for the launch of the Ifiasi project. Director General of Ghana Prisons, Matilda Bafuiwa, says overcrowding in the country's prisons has escalated by about 300%. This, she says, makes it impossible for the current structures to hold the large number of inmates. Interestingly, most of the prisoners are serving time for crimes they did not commit. Well, Chairman of the Prisons Council, Reverend Dr. Stephen Wingham, says the prison is potentially anybody's second home. We need to change the way we handle our prisoners. A change in the attitude of officers, a change in the way we assess and classify prisoners, a change in public perception of prisoners, and finally, a change in how we as a nation approach the subject of reformation and rehabilitation. President John Dramani Mahama also hinted he will push for an increase in the budgetary allocation of the prison service. In the next budget cycle, I intend to push for an increase in resource allocation for the Ghana prison service. This will help to increase the procurement of vehicles, logistics, communications, equipment, and accommodation for the Ghana Prison Service. For the project ambassadors and participants, Project Efiasi is a laudable idea. Yes, it's a, a task that I accept with uh, humility. I'm very honored for Reverend Dr. Wengam to um, select me to be part of the work of spreading the story of the Ghana prisons. Something that I look forward to doing. And um, I know it'll be a tough one. And we have to get the stories, not just the negative stories, but the positive ones as well, and tell the story with, with truth and honesty, and something I look forward to doing. Our expectation is that as Efiati has come to stay, it's a, it's a 10 years strategic plan. So we hope that it will, it will be beneficial to all of us to benefit. It's a very great idea, and then I see it in two different dimensions. The one being the inmates, having some skills that they can use to gain more income, to earn money, more income. Joy uses Seth Kwame Boatin, whose documentary Locked and Forgotten catalogued the ordeal of prisoners, was presented with an award. I think I have to do everything possible, anything I can do, um, to let the world know of um, what we can do to help our prisons. We have 43 prisons in this country, and almost all of them are congested in deplorable states. And if what transpired at the launch is anything to go by, then Project Efiasi has come to stay and may well be a success. For Joy News, Derek, a call Sam. Yeah, okay, so that's refreshing. It's always good to know that, you know, when you do something that is significant and is recognized and it changes lives, it changes situations, that's always a good thing. And when it comes with a beautiful honor like it did, well, then it's all good. Let me introduce to you my colleague, Seth Kwame Boateng. I mean, we've done this before. We talked locked and forgotten when you put it together. Uh, and look how far we've come with it. God has been good. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I think we did this together. Mm. That we did this together, <laughs> all of us. You met the president alone. <laughs> you are saying we did this together. No, but, but I represented multimedia over there. Hey. I didn't represent Seth Kwame Boatin. I was there to represent all. Yeah. From the cameramen to the editors, the drivers. We did it together. Yeah. I didn't do this alone. And uh, we thank God for that. Uh, it, I think I've asked this before. Did you think Locked and Forgotten was going to bring you this far? I, I think the expectation was for the work to go very far. Exactly. But did you expect, for instance, to be honored like you've been? Not, not at all. Um, I, was, I was really surprised. I, I didn't believe it would get to this, this stage or this point for, for me to be called, for me mm. to be interviewed, for people to call and say thank you, for international organizations to call and say we've watched the work, you did a very good job. Um, for the president to tell me 
set. I watched the documentary. It was moving. Thank you and congratulations. You deserve this. Um, Elise expected it. Yeah. But I think we are there. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Personally, maybe because I know you too well, I'm not surprised. And I, I, and I think that there are still a lot more things to come your way. Yeah, exactly. But what does this mean to your work as a professional journalist? You know, it tells me that uh, I should allow people to speak. I should take the microphone to the ordinary people, mm. not those in authority. There are stories are in there. And it tells me that I can also do more to alleviate the plight of people. I can use the microphone to tell stories of people to get help for them. Mm. And I think that's uh, my calling. You know, I, you know I, I can see people in pain. Seriously. So I always try my best with the help of God and my colleagues to help put smiles on people's faces. Mm. And, and th th I think that's what I'm ban mandated to, to do. And by God's grace, I think we are on course. So it tells me to do more to get to the people, get to know their problems and see how best we can help. Yeah. And and make them happy. Okay. Listen, I've still got uh, some more video to show uh, as you receive the award, but you know, I will also talk talk a lot more about what you've done, mm. the reason you are on it. And then we'll come and talk a little about where you've come from, <laughs> you know, because that's also very important. So let's watch this. We'll come back with Seth. Mm. Commitment and dedicated service to the Ghana Prison Service. You produced a chilling documentary about the plight of prisoners dubbed, locked, and forgotten. This documentary has touched the hearts of stakeholders in the criminal justice system and the general public. You unveiled the deplorable conditions in the country's prisons, as well as the obstructions in the justice delivery system, which sometimes results in remand prisoners being kept in custody for unduly long periods. Through the multimedia group, the world has heard the plight of prisoners and prison officers. Many Ghanaians are now aware of the state of existing prisons infrastructure in the country. In recognition and appreciation of your hard work, this citation is presented to you on this day, 30th of June 2015, as we launched Project Ifiasi, signed Matoda Bafuiwa, Director General, Reverend Dr. Stephen Wengam, Chairman. And this is presented to Seth Kwame Boateng of the Multimedia Group. Thank you, Mr. President. Congratulations to Ibrahim and to Seth.
so uh, that was Kwame uh, Boateng there, and I can't stop smiling. We've got to celebrate him. He's done so many things. Uh, a, a lot of you may not know, but apart from Locked and Forgotten, which is the documentary that brought him and, of course, all of us this honor, he's done other works in the past as well. So many documentaries he's done. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about where you've come from. Mm -hmm. But we were talking about lo the, the title, Locked, Locked and, Forgotten. and Forgotten. Let's briefly talk about where that came from. Why did you use Locked and Forgotten? Somewhere last year, I was with the Interior Minister. We went to Navrongo prisons. It was my first time entering the prison. We entered our, I asked, is this a prison? So people sleep here? He said, yes. I was surprised. And that day, they didn't know, but I wept. I said, come on. People live here, sleep here. And some of the inmates told the, the minister they have forgotten the taste of sugar and meat because for years, for years, they've never um, eaten meat or chewed meat or, or tasted sugar. I was like, my God, even soap to bath. So when we came out, I, I told the minister, please, would I be allowed to enter the prisons and do something about this? And he said, yeah, we can allow you. Mm. This so, is Interior Minister Mako Yongo. Mako Yongo. So the, uh, he discussed with the, the prison's director as well. They said, yeah, we can allow you to go. It was the first time uh, they were allowing cameras, cameras to the enter all corners. Mm. And they allowed me. I'm grateful to them anyway. Um, so after I had done all the interviews, I told a number of prisons from Tamale to Kumasi to Nsawam. Um, I interviewed a number of them. And I, I realized that they have been locked and we seem not to or we are unwilling we seem the country we, we it appears we are unwilling to to help them mm. so we've forgotten about them yeah so i said okay so locked and forgotten locked because when you enter the prison the padlocks are there and they, they will do it and lock you up and and then we forget you we forget as a you country. because some of them told me they are Family, their relatives have not even been there. It means they've forgotten about them. Mm. So th that was what led to, to that title. Yeah. yeah, amazing. And we know that following that, a lot of them have been released. And a lot of them, a lot of them. Um, yeah, for still there, that old woman yeah. who was in the documentary um, was released. When she went to court, the judge said, oh, go home. Then, um, Halidu, the boy, or man, 40-year-old man, who is said to have killed the daughter and has been in prison for over eight years. Uh, he's also home now. Mm. Sadly, one of them got home and he died. Uh. I got the news two days ago. This man... But it's good that he died home. Yes, he called me about a month ago and asked of a copy of the documentary. Okay. And told me to come and visit him in Tamale. Then two days ago, I got a call that... Um, he has passed. passed on. Yeah, oh, it saddens my heart, but but I think he's happy, or he'll be happy wherever yeah. he is today, yeah. because he died outside the prison. And I also thank God for the life of um, the, a 92-year-old man I met in the prison, Tamale prison. Mm. You know, when I went there, what, when I finished with everything I was about leaving, he called me, said, "My son, come." He was very ill, and he was at the infirmary. I went and he said. Hmm. I know I will die soon, but I want to go home and die. He was arrested in the 80s then. He was 60 years. I'm told it's a murder case, something like that. Very old. He's 92. And he was still there. And he was still there. Last two days, I got information that he's among those who are living, the 900 living oh, in the prison very pardoned. soon. Who have been pardoned. Okay. And I'm very happy. I'm yeah. very, very happy. Yeah. You should go and visit him. Yeah, I have to. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> but where have you come from? Far away. Because yeah. you've, you've lived in Kumasi. Yes. Before. I attended Amankwetia MA, Ajusu LA, Kumasi Anglican Secondary School, um, the University of Cape Coast, okay. and Legon. Um, I've come. <laughs> you've come from very, very far. Very, very far. Yeah. No, I, right after secondary school, 2001, I had the opportunity to work at Love Reception as a receptionist. So I started as a receptionist. 
but um, and you were night rider. Yes. And let me explain. <laughs> uh, uh, those I call the night riders. They are not. The, they they don't come during the no, day. No, 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 they no. only come in the evening, and they have to sit through the night till the following morning. So I, I, I was supposed to report at seven a.m. Mm. seven p.m. But I always got there around four, four p.m. Four p.m. Yeah, because at times I needed to walk from home to the office. And it would take a while. It would take so a while. Actually. Uh -huh. So I'll get there. And my ultimate aim was to be in the newsroom. So I'll go early and go to the newsroom. I'm so grateful to Saeed Ali Yaku, Saeed and Jimmy Agla. Yeah. They gave me. And Charles Van Dyke. Okay. So <laughs> once, once you mentioned Jimmy, I think it's appropriate for us to say congratulations oh, to him. Yeah. Yeah. And Jimmy lost their daughter yesterday. So our oh. condolences. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And he's the general manager of Love FM and Insure FM. Yeah, in Kumasi. Uh, uh, yeah, stations uh, in Kumasi. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so as a receptionist, uh, as a night rider, and then finally you were able to get to the newsroom. Yeah, mm. so I got the opportunity to go to school. I, I remember when I was being interviewed, um, the GM, the general manager then, um, Dominic Gajipo, asked me, do you have plans of going to school now? I said, no, I'll go to school in five years' time. And that was the truth. Of course, I didn't have money, so my, my, my plan was, okay, come and work, gather money, and go to school. Okay. So I gave myself five years. Then they opened admissions. I got a number of people to buy the forms for me, KNUST, Legon, University of Cape Coast. So I applied. I just applied. Mm. I didn't know how I was even going to pay the fees. So I applied, and interestingly or coincidentally, I got the admissions the same day, all the three. The same day. Oh, so you, you, you could have gone to KNUS. Yes. You could have gone to, to Legon, Legon. But I went to, UCC. went to UCC. The same day I got the admission, all the three. Wow. So when <laughs> they handed them to me, I went, to, I went back to the office and I went to Jimmy. Hey, I went to Dominic. I said, Dominic, uh, do you have a cane? He said, no. Why? I said, you have to beat me today. <laughs> because I told you I'll because only go I back to school yeah, in And I'm five going to years. disappoint you. I said, what are you talking about? I said, well, I gave him the letters. He said, congratulations, said, you can go anytime you vacate, come back. Oh. So that was it. So I went to school, University of Cape Coast. What did you read there? Um, economics and sociology. OK. Yeah. Were you still thinking journalism then? Yes, because I was still in it. Now, I'm coming to that. When I went to UCC, something happened on campus. A boy stabbed the girlfriend. The girl died. So I called Love FM. Because Said, Said, this is what has happened. Said said, can you report? I said, yes, I will try. So that was your first that report? That was my first report. So news time, they called me, and I fired. No time, we vacated. And um, I went back to Kumasi. I went back to the reception. I was there. Then Said came and said, follow me to the news. OK, so that Said is the news editor <laughs> at Love FM, which is one of our sister stations in Kumasi, just so. Uh, yeah, like, Said Ali Yaku. Yeah. So Said came one day. I was at the reception. He said, said, let's go to the newsroom. That was it. Oh. That was it. That was your breakthrough. That was my breakthrough. That was, and, and I learned a lot from Said. Mm. You know, if I'm to mention the names, eh, we we'll don't live yeah. here today. Because, you know, Kwame Boateng is actually like a blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, the results of a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people have contributed it, to your it's life. It's true. It's true. Uh, and I know it. So we can't begin to mention this. Yeah. But when did you move to Accra? Um, after uh, Investor of Cape Coast, I, <laughs> I didn't want to work with multimedia <laughs> again. So I wanted to Why? Move the on. money was too small. Eh? No, I... I don't know, but I think I was tired. You know, okay. when I was in school, I was, I was the central regional correspondent for Joy FM. Okay. Then on vacation, I'll go to Kumase and still report from Kumase. And uh, I don't know what happened, but I, I think I was tired and I wanted to do something uh, <laughs> different. No so. problem. That's fine. <laughs> so I remember Matilda Sante called me after school that said, come for us to talk. I said, Matilda, sorry, I cannot come. Then the next day, the programs manager, Kofi, also called me. They said, please come over. We understand you are in Accra. That time, I had, had moved to Choice FM. Fred uh, came for me. Uh, so I, Kofi are you <laughs> revealing this for the first time? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy to watching this one. <laughs> so I, I, Fred Owari came for me. So I went to Choice for like a month or so. 
So Kofi also, also heard I was there. So Kofi also called me. He was the then programs manager. He said, said, please, can you come over for us to talk? Kofi, I came. We sat. We had a chat. Then, from nowhere, the then general manager here, Kofi Asari, came in. And when I was at Love FM, he really helped me. He, was, he also came there to head yeah. the place. So as soon as he entered, he said, hey, said, what are you doing here? Are you done with school? I said, yes. Okay, pack your things and come. <laughs> I couldn't say no. Uh, so I had to change my national service um, from, Love FM, from Choice FM to this place. Oh, okay. So, so I started 2007, and, and I'm still here. And we're here in 2015. <laughs> and you're doing a lot of good things. Listen, uh, we celebrate you today. Uh, we're proud of you. May you continue to bring us honest. Amen. We all rejoice in it. We're grateful for your life, really. Uh, and said that's a lot, of, a lot of good things for all of us. So we're and proud of you. It's a teamwork, you know. Yeah. It's a teamwork. We are doing this I together. Know. Yeah. I know. I remember when you were planning Lockdown Forgotten. Exactly. You, Martha, I mean the back and forth. Yeah, fighting the with budgets. people. The budgets. <laughs> the budgets. That's what a lot of people don't know. Yeah, the getting a good car to go yeah, in. Exactly. I will insist yeah. that I don't want any, just any car, just Give me a good car and I'll yeah. go, oh, yeah. But you know, did they give you money when they give you the? Maybe it will come later. But they didn't say. No, it maybe it will come really. later. Yeah. Like, Kwame I didn't mention another envelope. Yeah. Like <laughs> no, 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 no. We beg you, we need cash. <laughs> okay, but thank you so much for sharing um, a piece of you with us mm. here on our show this morning. Uh, we're proud of you. We we'll continue to pray for thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for sharing. We thank God for that. <laughs> your, story, your story is like, oh. Okay, so hopefully uh, every young person out there who has listened to Kwame's story uh, will take some inspiration from it. That's the whole idea. Uh, let's learn. You can start from zero today. You have no idea. We all have our stories. Some people may look polished today, but their beginning wasn't polished at all but you can get to your destination just believe in yourself and just do it stay with us uh, we've got a lot coming your way uh, i am saddened you know after this joyous news uh, because some of our young people were told about 50 percent are at risk of uh, getting hiv aids that's really scary there's a survey that was recently carried out we're going to be talking a lot more about this here on our show